Okay, good afternoon everyone. It's a quick one this afternoon. It's 2013 Range Rover Evoque. On the screen in the middle, when we put it into reverse, we get a parking assistance unavailable message. And the fault code that's logged is a um, parking switch. It says, so there's a switch the way you can disable the parking sensors from inside the vehicle. Um, if you've got a, if for example, you want to turn them off for any reason. Um, so the fault code saying that that switch is stuck closed. We've tested the switch, the switch has impressed it a lot of times, feels okay. Um, this is the connector that connects into the switch pack. Um, testing at the connector for the switch pack, the switch is not stuck closed, the switch itself is fine. Um, so at the moment we think we've got either a module issue or a circuit issue, or we did do. Um, the module, the packing module itself, is here in the near side rear quarter, behind there. Uh, the wires run down this big loom, along, or underneath the seat, along the sill. Uh, along this sill, uh, round this corner, up into these connectors, or into that one connector, and then goes behind the dash, over to the, over to the switch pack. Um, Little test we're doing then. So this is our uh, wiring diagram. This is module, parking module, and this is switch pack. And this is only the parking side of the switch pack. So only the inhibit switch and oh, sorry, the the parking aid, as in the the self park switch and the switch or the park assist switch. Sorry, I'm getting mixed up. Uh, and the parking aid. So this is parking sensors. This is the one that we're looking at. Um, it has a basically a feed from the module out of the connector on the module to this connector, which is that connector. Uh, so that's from the module underneath the seat, along the sill to the connector, behind the dash uh, and up to the switch back. And then it goes to ground when the switch is closed. So you push the switch closed, um, the current goes to ground and the module detects that the switch has been pressed. Um, I think the module is fine. I think the problem is, and we're gonna demonstrate it here, so we've got multimeter switched on, just on, essentially on continuity, and if it detects if it detects any continuity whatsoever, it will beep. So right now we've got I'm just back probing the switch connector without the switch pack connected, and the other side of the multimeter is on a ground. This here, so that's a known good ground. Um, I've already tested continuity end to end, so we've got continuity from there over to there, so there's no breaks in the wire. Uh, what we have instead, so it detects, remember the, the module is detecting that the switch is stuck closed. So it's always detecting a ground path. But we know that the switch is fine. So from this connector, through the switch, back through the connector to ground, all that side is fine. So we potentially have a problem over here. Um, if the wire was broken, uh, it, would, it wouldn't detect a switch stuck closed because there would be no continuity to ground so i think we've got a ground issue as in uh, a chafed wire or something in here um, it just so happens that as i was digging in to get to this connector and you might like this one the, there's all this soundproofing um which be the floor mats you've got the soundproofing uh, and then you've got the bodywork here you can't see it very well so just get a bit closer so down in there, you can see our wiring loom underneath the carpet. And remember this will beep if we de detect any continuity to ground. All I'm going to do, I've got one hand on the camera, one hand down here. There we have 70 ohms to ground. It's not the per world's most perfect ground, but it's enough of a ground to drag that voltage down to ground and allow the module to detect as if the switch has been pressed. So I'm gonna dig this carpet out and get, to, get some pictures of what we find. All right, just one thing to note. First of all, this rowing loom runs approximately there. You may be able to see them. Can you hear it? A little bit of weld spatter from in production. 
and stuck to stuck to the metal of the bodywork. It's not exactly sharp, but it has damaged this one way. Yeah, that's not the wire we're looking for though, unfortunately. But I just thought I'd show you that. It's quite interesting. And that little bit of weld spatter has definitely damaged one wire in the area where we're looking, so do a bit more digging. All right, a little bit more digging. We're looking at this light green and brown wire, just on my fingertip. Can you see the damage right on the end of my fingertip? See the light green has got that light, it's got that brown stripe and the brown stripe is deformed. You probably can't quite see, but there's copper, the, what, the wire core showing through that. So if that was resting on that, that piece of weld spatter, when I pushed on the wiring loom, then the copper core touches the weld spatter and that grounds from the copper core to the weld spatter to the body and the body is ground. Which is enough to get our fault code. That is tiny. Tiny little thing. Well, fix that and try it. Okay, engine running. Here is the moment of truth. There you go. Everything works again. Parking sensors work. Camera works. No more parking system unavailable. Message. Which is what we like. And all because of that. Tiny little piece of world's better. Beautiful. Well, that's another one fixed. Just Land Rover's YouTube channel. Subscribe, subscribe, please, everybody. Like and subscribe it. See you all later. Thanks very much. Bye.